my mind, I am a game developer, but in my heart, I am a gamer. This week on Boss Battle. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Welcome everyone to Boss Battle number 151, a show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F.J. Tom, but before we get to the infotainment and good time making of this podcast, let's see what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What did you achieve? Uh, I played some blops, some Advanced Warfare, um, NHL 14, Fight Night 4, uh, you know, just, just the stuff that I had. Cool. Uh, nothing, nothing major. Sort, what'd you achieve? I achieved buying video games this weekend. <laughs> um, we went to we went to the Apple Store last night, and uh, we stopped by GameStop. And and listen, I've been trying in my life to be more forgiving, and we know they have had problems with GameStop in the past, and mm-hmm. it helps that they had games that were like five bucks. So they had a five for twenty deal on this one bin, and I found all the good ones. So I now own a copy of Halo Four, uh, Devil May Cry Four, uh, uh, Ninja Guy y- Yaguba. Yeah, Zuba, whatever, Ninja Guy Z, which is a very, it's the one I actually sat down and played a little bit of. Very, very fun, kind of an arcade, hack and slashy kind of game. And uh, and Gears of War 3, which you reminded me afterwards that yeah. I should not have purchased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the free game the, well, starting tomorrow. <laughs> I should have known better. I should have known better. It's, See, it's I, fun. I was worried about Halo 4 because I kind of figured they would have dropped Halo 4 sh- like in the next yeah. few months or something because 3 is already out there. And, and what Assassin's Creed 4 is already out there. So I don't Which know. Which I told you I was going to sell you my copy of Halo, or Halo 4, but that's fine. I was, tired of, waiting, I was, I was tired of waiting for you. I'm going to play some of that sweet multiplayer action. <laughs> I have Halo Reach still to play. Is that yeah. before Halo 4? I can't remember. But I was already earmarking that yeah, to play here soon, so it was before four. Should I mm-hmm. play? It's a prequel. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. a good game. Okay. Okay. I have, so one day I'll borrow my brother's ODST, maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, I, I it was it was so busy. Like I said, I did a lot of traveling over the last week and uh, really didn't get to a lot of video games. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't get to the blops with you there, Chachi. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, miss right. it. I, miss I knew it. you weren't available. Yeah. Yeah, um, I haven't even played Immortals or anything. Like it's all—it's just been blank. I'm just uh, 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 trying to find that time before I go on vacation, doing all the works. So, anyways, Bobby, I played for real video games this week, guys. Played some Mortal Kombat. Played some GTA V. Played some Far Cry Four, which I got in the uh, Microsoft Summer Sale. Uh, really good game so far. Uh, I haven't really gotten that far into it. Um, I tried one of the multiplayer maps, uh, not multiplayer maps, single player like maps, as if like the first thing I did in the game, and I failed miserably. <laughs> uh, my brother was over watching me, and he's like, uh, "You're not supposed to die that much, are you?" I was like, "It's new." <laughs> um, also played like Simpsons Tapped Out, stuff like that, uh, the cat game, of course, all the all the standards, Crossy Road, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, all right, anything else? Nope, I think that's it. I don't see anything in the chat room all yet. All right. All right, uh, Chachi, you want to send us around the net? It is now time for video game theme thing from around the internet. First up, uh, Kotaku found a custom N64 table. Oh. Uh, it is a custom built table made out of wood that has a N64 unit built into it. Um, That's awesome. And on the the end of the table is the the ports where you plug the controllers in. Wow! Uh, it comes with a, a nice little hanging system for additional controllers and a uh, a video game rack um, per se. Uh, so you can go over to insertcoinbegin dot com, check out the link, and it's all listed or it's all detailed there. Um, I think brings new meaning to no nope. event. Uh, brings new meaning to tabletop games. Yeah. Um, it, it's a one-of-a-kind, not-for-sale, so you can drool over it, but don't don't think you're going to get it. As with most uh, nerd things. What's that? As with most nerd things. Yeah. Uh, next up, a museum in Japan, uh, Mirakan, Japan, is uh, has a, a Pokemon exhibit. Hmm. where people can go and actually take part as a research assistant and classify 
and research uh, the different Pokemons. Oh, question. Um, question. Yeah. Can you take a fossil and turn it into a Pokemon? No. Not accurate. Well, the machine doesn't exist in real life, Bobby. Only in Pokemon. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so you can go over and check out all the, all the stuff that they're showing since we here in the States most likely aren't going to make it in time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it also, the exhibit also has a history of the game series as well as a completed, uh, I'm sorry, a completed study of why the series has done so well for as long as it has. Uh, so, again, it's linked. You can go over and check it out. Uh, last but not least, uh, you guys are big wrestling fans, mm -hmm. um, so you're aware of the fact that Brock Lesnar completely destroyed a car with what appears to be two axes. Yes, mm -hmm. that he did. <laughs> uh, live on Raw. Uh, well, Sleepy Bear Gaming Studio took the footage of Brock Lesnar destroying a car on Raw and overlaid the Street Fighter II bonus stage graphics. <laughs> I love that they used the Joey Mercury. <laughs> Yeah. picture of his nose after the latter incident. Yeah. Um, so go over. It's only a minute long, but it's definitely worth checking out whether you're a wrestling fan or not because it, it, it's fitting. Um, so you can go over to Chachi's – or wow, no. Go over Too to AnswerCoinToBegin.com. Too early. <laughs> I, almost, I almost broke into a plug for Chachi Plays, I'm thinking. Go to Chachi Plays. Hit that donate button. Yeah. Um, but this, no, go this, over to InsertCoinToBegin.com and check out the, this week's post. I can't uh, wait. That's all I, then go to Chachi Plays and hit yeah, that donate button. Then go to ChachiPlays.com and hit that donate button. Well, ask Chris uh, that's if you... all I have for you this week on it's, uh, Oh, wow. You know what? Screw it. Back to you, Bobby. I was going to say, I want to ask Chris if she's if you're just like breaking out in Chachi Plays plugs like in the middle of the night. You know? <laughs> Sleep Chachin. And she just like, she just like reaches over and like, I know, I know. I'll donate in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious I'll uh, pass <laughs> Alright guys, so it's time for some things we should be made aware of uh, Today it was announced that Batman is returning Batman Returns uh, Well, Michael Keaton's version of the iconic 1989 Batman and Batmobile are coming back to Arkham Knight uh, the Via DLC, uh, Rocksteady and Warner Brothers announced that today mm -hmm. uh, It will be available to you if you purchase the season pass for the game uh, which is kind of cool, uh, I guess. Uh, the DLC will also have two tracks that are inspired by the film's sequel, uh, Batman Begins. Hopefully they include the little rubber duckies and penguins and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, but, but Bobby, Bobby, that's Batman Returns. Don't, that, oh yeah, Batman. <laughs> I typed Batman Begins. I'm an idiot. It's all right. Batman Returns. That's what I mean. Nice. <laughs> and I even said Batman Returns at the beginning of the thing. Oh, well. You yeah. did. You did. You're all right. Uh, also, all right. Also included in the uh, the DLC will be secondary character skins, including 1990s Catwoman, uh, one year later Robin, uh, Arkham Origins Batman, iconic Graham Black Batman, 1970s Batman, and the original Arkham Nightwing. Uh, the content should be available by August. Okay, my question to you guys is, is this enough to get you to buy the season pass? Uh, later, when it's on a the game. later when it's on a Steam sale. <laughs> nope. Oh, not PC. No, don't do not do that. What? Well, don't I, get it on no, PC. listen, by the time I get on a Steam sale and I get it for the price that I paid for the other Arkham games, um, no, they'll fix all the. Race. It's never, no, it's it's never going to be fixed. They'll fix the patches by then, I'm it's sure. It's never going to be fixed. It's going to be. Oh, come on. Of course. Batman's going to look like uh, he's always in the Scarecrow's world. <laughs> <laughs> Which might be kind of cool. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know? It should be. All right. Uh, but no, that, that, part, oh, I'm ahead. sorry, those are cool. No, no, seriously, as a longtime Batman reader, um, and uh, a 15 year old me has a very strong affinity for purple costume Catwoman, so mm -hmm. yeah. I wonder if they could work uh, Prince into the game. Oh, that'd be great if they had the, 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 the 89 the, pr the Prince soundtrack to this thing. You just like pass a car and you hear the Prince song playing. I was like, ah. <laughs> Or, or or like Grand Theft Auto, the Batmobile has radio stations that play the Prince theme nonstop. Oh, I'm going to find uh, Also, the 60s Batman theme, too. All right, an odd partnership emerged today from the depths of the game of gaming and entertainment. Oh. Comcast has announced that it is partnering with EA, of all companies, I don't know why, uh, to bring gaming to your cable box. Oh. Um, if you are a Comcast customer, you can sign up for the beta. That's, uh, the beta sign-ups are starting today. 
Uh, it doesn't require you to, uh, to have an additional controller, which is kind of cool. Um, instead, it uses your smartphone or tablet to control the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the supported titles are eh, uh, – they include Monopoly, FIFA Soccer 13, not 15, 13, uh, Real Racing 2, Plants vs. Zombies, NBA Jam, Zuma's Revenge, uh, World of Goo, Peggle Knights, uh, Little Inferno, uh, Feeding Frenzy 2, and Mule. That's M period U period L period E. Uh, this will only be available to, to customers that already have an X1 set top box. Okay. Um, so uh, is this Comcast trying to nudge its way into gaming or just something extra to offer their customers to get more attention? You know, we talked about their streaming service that they just started uh, where, where it was like $15 for HBO plus uh, plus uh, uh, uh uh, local channels so they're really edging into whatever they can to see what works i think chachi you're the one with the x1 etc uh, etc et something over there and you're raising your hand very politely one can i point out that wait i also want to point out that you changed your hat yeah i found a different one <laughs> I, I i found one that i preferred more than the past Ch- Ch- chachi's actually playing hat tricks yeah anyhow <laughs> um i would like to point out that the companies that have won multiple uh uh, Golden Poo Awards are teaming up together. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> Raising that level. This, this is crazy. the, the yeah, pooliest. Let me, let me just point out that they're taking uh, a steaming pile of crap to a whole new level. Uh, but uh, to be fair, I do patronize. I do. I am a pa- patron. I am a customer of both of these companies, and I will mm. forever be a customer for at least one of them. Um <laughs> Because no, there's no choice. A, I don't know why Com- it, Comcast is getting such a bad rep. I don't, yeah, have, I don't, a problem. I have, Comcast. I don't yeah. have Comcast. My service works great. I don't have a problem with Comcast. Mm-hmm. Um, how, and, and you know what? If I didn't already own several of the games on that list, I would be more excited about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I own Plants vs. Zombies. It's on my Xbox. I own NBA Jam. It's on my Xbox. Mm-hmm. I don't need it on my cable. How about FIFA 13? No, uh, I still don't believe soccer's a real sport. Oh, um, wow. No. Oh, wow. There, there we go. So I, I uh, don't care that uh, FIFA 13 is on there. Uh, to be fair, I would play it, though. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a video game sport, um, I don't have to actually recognize the fact that it, it exists. Um, but no, I mean, why not break into the market that everyone else seems to be doing nowadays? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's something cheap. But there's no such thing as a one-function device anymore. Yeah, they're they're trying they're trying to get into that market where everybody else is now, where it's like an entertainment console instead of a you know mm-hmm. a cable box or a video game console. Right. You know, it, it's it, I I see it's I think it's good for entertainment in general. You know what? I remember even like DirecTV boxes ten years ago having little games on them. So any mm-hmm. anything that that gives you that opportunity, oh, I just press a button and now I have video games and you entertain the kids. You know, I mean, right. I mean that, that, that that's what this is for. And, and I kind of question about these, like how, what level of games they are. They look like they're pretty much just glorified Android games. So it's not like you're getting the Xbox One version of FIFA, you know. Right. Uh, so, so for that, I think it's fine. Uh, it, it's just another option, and I think we're just going to be inundated with all these options. And uh, I don't know if any of them will survive, not survive, whatever the case may be. But um, uh, good, you have there's so many choices to play games out here uh, these days, and, and this really kind of jumps onto the same thing the Amazon Fire TVs and everything else is doing. So um, yeah, I, I think it's it's fine for what it is, and and somebody will jump on. To be onto completely it. honest, mm-hmm. if it is a thing that I am able to do, I guarantee you, there's going to come a day where I'm too lazy to pick up uh, an Xbox controller, or you know, I'm laying on the couch and I'm just going to be hey. like, oh, you know what, I should probably check this out. That day has come for me because I have a Connect. <laughs> so I mean, I'm just going to be like, you know what. I'm not really doing anything. There's nothing on the 200 channels I have. Let's just pick up this remote and play some video games. I, my, my this, is, this is like my current state of affairs. I would rather yell at my TV until I'm blue in my face to turn turn the channel instead of picking up my remote or my Xbox controller. <laughs> Even though my Xbox doesn't listen to me all the time. I just I, – I'm constantly like – I should ground it. Yeah, I know. It's like, just like having a child. Yeah. Xbox, go – 
Xbox, go home. You're Damn it, Xbox, <laughs> go to your room. Wait. Uh, all right. Moving on here. Uh, the pettiness of uh, Konami versus Kojima has taken a new turn. Taken oh, a new geez. turn. Uh, now they've re- removed his name from the company and the company logo uh, from the box art of Metal, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. According to a post on NeoGAF yesterday, a picture of the box art was changed from a previous version that was released. Uh, the differences between the Kojima production or the differences between the box art, uh, the Kojima Productions logo, and a Hideo Kojima game are now missing from the packaging. Uh, recently, it was thought that cooler heads were prevailing in this battle, uh, as Konami was mentioning Kojima as being involved in the game and even attaching uh, his name to some other products. Uh, but now they've changed. Now that, the, now that has changed, and since his name and logo were removed. Um, however, earlier in the week, the Japanese voice actor for Solid Snake confirmed that Kojima Productions was closing its doors. So um, either way, uh, Kojima stated that he will be involved with the game until its release on September 1st. Um, do you guys think that uh, Hideo Kojima – I want to call him Hideo Tommy uh, – Hideo Kojima's name deserves to be on the game since he worked on it, or do you think uh, Konami has the right to take – like and, and taking his name off of the game since uh, they no longer want to be affiliated with him? What do you guys think? Do you think he deserves to be on there? If he developed the game, yeah. If it's in the mm-hmm. contract that that should be on the box, yeah. Uh, so I'm, but, but, but if – and I can't remember how deep the issues are. Like, is it, did he do something that looks bad on Konami, or are they just kind of being petty about something? I think they're just being petty. Okay. So, I mean, who knows? I think they want to separate from them for some reason. Right, right, right. And I'm wondering what's, what, what, what's coming from that. Um, no, they got they already do whatever the heck they want. You know, kind of stinks, but I don't know. It, it's, it seems so small to me. Yeah. Kind of, it's Konami. Come on. Josh? I don't have a dog in this fight. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I'm still um, gonna buy the game. I, I've never, pl- I've never really sat down to play Metal Gear Solid. I'm sure it's a great game. It just mm-hmm. doesn't appeal to me. You the play campiness three. of the game, the campiness of the game, just turns me off. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I gotta, don't. You gotta play three. I, I don't need to play any of them. <laughs> you gotta. And, play three. And, and, and the fact that these these two people or the the company and this guy are having this petty bickering match back and forth it's like two high school teen girls mm. fighting in the hallway in between the classes no one cares shut up do your job or mm. don't do your job quit or yes. or so they can get pizza they can they can friends they can just walk out and get some pizza slice on broadway.com our friends down here in the south hills of pittsburgh in beachview and carnegie pa down on main street the support in pittsburgh podcasting with fine pepperoni pizza perfectly over the last year go check them out slice on broadway.com uh pch underscore slice on the twitters as well as uh slice on broadway on instagram on facebook get hungry let them know you learned about them on the boss battle and there's bobby's face and now let's take a look back at sorgatron media in the past week I've yeah. given up on Crossy Road. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh, that's uh, sad and disheartening. But you can, I mean, you can only cross so many roads, Bobby. It, it's retrofitted with giant paintball guns, like Gatling paintball guns. And, uh, and it looks freaking serious. It actually takes two people to o- operate. There's actually an operator and a gunner in this thing. It's ridiculous. So, and there's some shots there of it just destroying cars with paintballs. <laughs> Wow. Amazing. He gave me one of the most memorable moments I'll ever have in my entire career. No matter what I've done before or what I will do. Uh, that night, Chuck handed me the IWC title, the old title, the custom-made International Wrestling Cartel heavyweight title. And I'm, and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking at it. I have it in a glass case on my wall. It's not a lot of times in independent wrestling that you get to keep something that you worked very hard for, okay? Like can't snarky. say don't be don't be it yeah yeah don't, don't be a, snarky yeah. don't be a no smart ass comments. don't be like, a, don't be a smart ass don't be yeah that's smart it. ass sword did you just come up with that yeah I don't think I've heard of it before mother f-ing awesome. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh, August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium, or join us live 
ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start! Man, we had a good time last week across all the shows. Check out everything. Uh, of course, this show at insertcointobegin.com and everything else is linked at sorotronmedia.com. Bobby, back to the news that's fit to podcast about. All right. Well, I got some sad news for everybody this week. Uh, not only did Nintendo, uh, but the gaming world lost an icon of the gaming industry this week. Satoru Iwata, uh, the president of Nintendo Japan, passed away at the age of 55 uh, due to a bile duct tumor. Um, it was very unexpected. Uh, Iwata was one of the original employees when Nintendo began its time as a gaming company. Uh, he helped develop games such as Kirby's Dream Land, Smash Brothers, Earthbound, uh, and Balloon Fight. Uh, he also coded uh, the battle program in Pokemon within one week. Uh, so that just tells you how good of a programmer he was. Um, he was the face of the company for many years, uh, making appearances along his friend Miyamoto, uh, including at this year's E3, where they even had puppets made of all three, uh, Iwata, uh, Miyamoto, and Reggie. Uh, the news was uh, very hard for a lot of gamers who grew up with Nintendo's characters and games that he created. Uh, we at Insert Coin would like to send our deepest sympathies to Mr. Iwata's family and friends and everyone at Nintendo. Um, our final round question deals with this this week. Uh, what were some of your favorite games or characters that Mr. Iwata created, and where does Nintendo go from here? You know, that was funny because it's not a name. I, 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 you know, other than Miyamoto, I, I don't think I'm familiar with who. Like, I don't. I'm not familiar with game developers a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm learning a lot about it through this. Um, like some of the stories I've been hearing have been really fantastic. Like that, uh, you know, he was president. For first of all, I, I think these, this is this is good to point out. I think I think Riz pointed a lot of these out in his article over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I've also been hearing other stories about him. He's the first one. He's only the fourth president at Nintendo since like 1880 something when they started as a card playing game, uh, uh company. Uh, he also was the CEO after being an actual game programmer developer for many years. He did, as you mentioned, w was involved with many of things, uh, after he became, a uh, a, pre a, a CEO, he actually helped, uh, to debug smash brothers um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know which version they're 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 alluding to. I don't know if it's the N64 version or one of the later ones with GameCube. Um, but like it, he still was involved in that, mm -hmm. and and I he's very hands on with the company, right? And I think more important is is that his mission of coming out and saying everybody should be able to play games, which led to the Wii uh, and the touchscreen uh, uh, situations with their portable games, which is just very accessible, right? Uh, and they really kind of pioneered that kind of stuff. To the point where, well, now we have phones that do it too, and they're figuring out the next step. But uh, if it wasn't for that dedication to that, and and not being a Me Too company uh, to try to hang with PlayStation, and Xbox, um, I I we I don't think we would have the Nintendo that we complain about today, uh, mm -hmm. even uh, to that great extent, because they still make I great mean, games. You cannot say they don't make great games, and they did it with this guy at the head. As much as we complained about the Wii and Wii U, almost everybody has a Wii. Like, right. Even even like elderly people were buying these for right. retirement homes, and it was a way for therapy. They just wanted his vision was he wanted everyone to play games. You know what? Uh, we were down at one of the pay per view parties at our friends the Carlins, and uh, 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 Matt's Matt's grandfather came in and said and said that he's going to whip his butt at Wii bowling. <laughs> you know, and he was fairly elderly uh I, I that's fantastic that's so amazing and 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 to think about that and and you know no we're not getting the zelda that we want right now but but the stuff we've gotten over the years is just tremendous and that it, that it's kind of done that sort of thing so chachi i i mean what can you say that hasn't been said already mm -hmm. uh, i i mean he's had a hand in every the iconic Nintendo game that you can think of since 2002. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, like, like you already said, Balloon Fight, Earthbound, Kirby. Um, he assisted in founding Creatures, Inc., um, mm -hmm. which he ended up helping on, on five different Pokemon games. Um, he helped on Mario, Zelda. I, I mean, modern day Nintendo is where it is positively mm -hmm. 
in, in thanks to him. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, he, he was one of the first. It, he was one of the first people to decide not to, to broadcast the E3. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, so it, he had an overall reach into Nintendo that was beyond anything um, except for maybe the people before him. Um, the people after him have, have their work cut out for them. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean... If you think that uh, Reggie is going to step up, well, Reggie's already president of Nintendo of America. Um, well, there, there's been there's been rumors that Miyamoto might take over um, as president. Which that's, he's kind of co-president right now. With, that's uh, kind of kiboshed. Guy. He's not interested. He's actually taking. Oh, he said he's not interested. He, he, well, I, the, the the feeling is he's 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 not interested. He's actually already taken steps back as far as he's not heading productions on Mario and Zelda mm-hmm. franchises. He's uh, kind of overseeing the Star Fox one. Uh, so, I mean, he is like, I think in his seventies, early seventies. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I, I can't see him doing that. And I think he's a guy, uh, and the other, the other conversation that happened from this, um, I think, uh, daily tech news show was big on this part. Um, to take a game developer and make them a CEO mm-hmm. and make them a business person is kind of a amazing feat right. that he pulled off. Well, I think, uh, one of the articles I, I read was, uh, they were comparing him to Steve Jobs as far as like his innovations and stuff like that for Nintendo, and and how he like he died young, you know. It was it was a really neat article mm-hmm. to see what he had really done for the gaming industry. Right. Um. And one of my one of my favorite. I I I tweeted this or I posted this on the Facebook page. Uh, one of his quotes he said was on my business card and, and one of the quotes I said at the beginning of the show mm-hmm. on my business card I am a corporate president in my mind I am a game developer but in my heart I am a gamer and I think that that's such a great quote coming from like a you know an executive who still had the love of like to play video games and, and you know and he knows what the, the consumer wants you know Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I uh, kind of a, for comparison purposes, we we lost somebody in the in the wrestling world in Dusty Rhodes, and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the conversations were about uh, he was a guy that loved the business that he was involved in, and I see a lot kind of emulated here with uh, w- w- with with him uh, that he was a guy that loved the business, and and I think that uh, you know nothing but positive things being being said about him uh, coming out of this, of course, and and uh, you know. Uh, it, it was surprising, and I, I hope Nintendo, you know, there's some concerns since they're kind of going through a bit of a shift right now for the mm-hmm. next step between the mobile and the uh, NX system uh, strategies coming up, whatever that's going to turn out to be. Uh, so there's a little worry about that. There's been no word about who's going to replace them just yet, as, a, as, as we know, at press time here. And um, and uh, I don't know. I, I You know, I... I uh, I'm sure it'll be fine uh, as far as that goes. Nintendo will live on. I mean, it, 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 mm-hmm. certainly, certainly. Uh, and I'm sure they got somebody. There, there's a contingency plan in there somewhere. So, yeah. right. All right. That's going to do it for us this week. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at InsertCoinTV. You can visit us at InsertCoinToBegin.com. New articles going up daily. And you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on Live.SorgatronMedia.com. Sorg, you want to plug anything? I want to plug all the things. You can go <laughs> check out the Power Hour with myself and LB, uh, the DJ and, and the Sorg. I'm sorry, LB and the Sorg uh, Morning Afternoon Power Hour. That's uh, listed over at SorgatronMedia.com, Sorgatron.com. Please subscribe to all the things. And uh, video game wise, of course, Chachi plays. Uh, Chachi, you got to hang out with Yed Jagoff last week or the week before. We did. Uh, we filmed a lot of fun stuff. Uh... That you'll see popping up on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram uh, before you know it. Mm-hmm. If you see those, please share them. Please tell your friends. Please donate. Please mm-hmm. uh, come hang out with one of the tournaments. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun here coming up at the Tunzeum in just uh, uh, just uh, about a month, if I'm not re- mistaken. So Yeah, just, just under a month. Just under a month. Go check it out. Help us out for the kids. All right. Uh, and I, w- I want to plug Riz Plays Games for Riz since he's not here this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... At me, you can follow me at, at Bobby FJ Town. Uh, that's gonna do it. Game over. Game over, yeah! This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.